Oh my gosh. We're in front of my workbench. Every time we're in front of my workbench, something magical happens. Last time we were here, we checked out my little strawberry plant behind us. I do have a couple strawberry plants back there for your enjoyment. But we also did an ozone test. We had a control box, we had an ozone box. I still have those boxes right here. Now this guy, we pumped full of ozone. This guy, we pumped full of nothing. We did nothing to it, we just left it in a box. A little background on these machines. These were used at my old job long ago. We would send these home with patients for five nights, get some data, see what pressure they needed to be on. We never cleaned them at all other than the surface. We never used ozone cleaners on them. So none of them, prior to me getting my hands on them, bringing them home, did they ever have ozone pumped through them. This one's clean, this is my clean one. We shall dub the control. Then we have this one. This is the one that I pumped full of ozone for like a month or 45 days. It was quite a while. Daily dousings of ozone. I'm gonna open up both of these machines. We're gonna take a look at the foam. When I initially did this test, we didn't know about the foam being a problem. This is an affected unit. Both are affected units. If you have a Philips Respironic System one like these, it is affected by the recall. If you're on the website, you're putting in the serial number and it's saying it's not affected, that's wrong. It is affected, it is part of the recall. Let's find out what this foam looks like on the inside. We dub this one ozone. So I know I'm gonna get asked the question at some point, should I do this, should I open up my machine and should I pull out the foam? That is a question for another video. This one we are strictly looking at, what does it do to the foam? Now this is very interesting. I just pulled off the covers. Both of these units have been used about the exact same. This is the control. No ozone had ever gone through it. Look how clean this is on the inside. And look at how dirty this is on the inside. Even on the inside of it, there's dust everywhere on this. Look how clean and shiny that is. Time to take a quick PP and by quick PP, I mean post-production, obviously. I already have my video edited, but I want to add this because it's so dang cool. This is the unit. I have it basically bare bones. I want you to be able to kind of see what it looks like as it sits in there because I get a lot of questions about that. So here's something that's really cool before I get to the main point of this. If we peel off this side, this is what goes into the humidifier, this tube. On this tube is this little uh, hole right here. This little hole is what connects right here. It seals in there. This is what gets the pressure reading if you're using things like Oscar. This is where basically the algorithm comes from. It's reading it the every waveform. It's processing those waveforms and it's determining what the auto CPAP uh, should do. Should it adjust up, down, whatever. So honestly, this is one of those things when people say they could build a CPAP machine. All it would take me is a trip to Home Depot in five minutes. <laughs> I don't think so, but okay. Uh, if someone wants to try to build a CPAP, I am game. I will promote that video all day long, uh, so do it. Okay, here's the crux of it though. So I have the foam sitting right here. They think that the air doesn't go through the foam because if we take this off and you look at this unit, it looks like it's all completely self-contained and it kind of is, sort of. However, this would be the bottom of it. It'd be sitting in like in here. What it does is that this is the air intake. The filters are right there. That is sucking air in through this. Now this is completely sealed off. You can see that that seals entirely the bottom. So any air coming up and going into the blower has to filter through the foam and then it gets taken up into this right here. This hole, if we were to open up the top, you can see this is the hole and it feeds up into this, which is our blower. So yes, the foam is getting in the way of sucking uh, up into the blower, which in turn is gonna come right out here, shoot into the humidifier, right up through the, the tubing uh, into your face. I thought some people might geek out on that as I do. Uh, here's the rest of the video. So here we have the little hamster wheel. This is the blower. So my control one, the screws are different in it. There's like nothing. I have every hex set screw the world has to offer. These are like extremely thin. Uh, this looks like the, it's different. It's very different. So I'm gonna go ahead and just pop this out using brute strength. Brute. 
we finally got it off. Control, this one's been doused in radioactive fallout. You can see the difference. This one is really discolored. That stuff is flaking off. See the flaking off here? Let's try this one. I don't see any flaking off. I can't get to it now, I'm gonna have to crack it open, but I wanna take a look inside of these actual motor units and see if anything's different. I heard a loud whining sound with the ozone one after I doused it with ozone. I'm wondering if it's something inside of this. I'll have to crack this one open. I can't right now because I don't have the screws for it. I'm gonna have to use, again, brute force, uh, but we'll have to check that out a different time. This one was doused with ozone. You can see the discoloration of it. This one was not doused with ozone. This thing is very flaky. Look, I don't know if you can see that. There's all kinds of stuff coming off of it. This one was not doused with ozone. Very interesting result. Ozone, non-ozone. You can see the color difference. Let me know what you think. Ozone apparently does make a difference in this sound abatement foam. So quite the interesting result on that. This still doesn't help with the volatile organic compounds that are being released day one from this foam. Even this one that's intact is apparently still putting off gases that are known carcinogenic fumes. Can't win, can you? Just because I know everyone's gonna think I can't get this thing back together again, watch this. It's quite easy, guys. Just line up everything the way you had it. Remember what you did. Couple screws here, couple screws there. You line up the foam, you pop stuff in, you make sure it's right, you eyeball it, then you ask your wife, hey, what do you think? I love it, I love it. They did a great job. All right, thanks for watching. Let me know what you think of this in the comment section down below. I'm sure you'll say I did something wrong with this, um, other than not having the correct hex head. Uh, if you have a minute, I would really appreciate you subscribing to this channel. Do me a favor and also check out the links in the description box down below and I appreciate all of your comments. Thanks for watching, bye. Thank you to all watching, but an extra thick thanks, buddy, to Ray Troutman, Veronica Young, Sarvesh Joshi, Stuart Hetherington, and Mona Swearingen. And thank you to my other level Patreon supporters, as well as my YouTube members.